Good morning. It is January 10th, 2021, and I want to welcome you to our online worship here at the United Church of Sandwich. I am Pastor Tom Burke, and I'm honored to have you worshiping with us and our church family. Before we begin the worship, I want to share and celebrate that we have a guest preacher here today. Uh, Reverend Derek Rogers is a uh, United Methodist pastor here in the Northern Illinois Conference, but many of you know him as someone who was born baptized, confirmed, and raised in this church, who found his calling here with you. And so he has, has preached a message, message to share with you today as we are uh, continuing into this new year. And I ask that we are in an attitude of prayer and praise as we worship God together, and that we open our hearts and minds to hear uh, Pastor Derek's words and to hear God's word. Have a blessed Sunday and a blessed worship. Amen. Please join us in the opening dialogue and the opening prayer. You will read the words on the screen. We have been claimed by the God who calls us children. We, the redeemed, have been called by name. As with the Israelites, God promises to pass with us through the water. We will not fear. For God is with us. The rivers shall not overwhelm us, for God is our guide and our protector. Through God's saving grace, the waters that tested us are now the waters that wash us and nourish us. Great is the fount of every blessing, ever flowing, ever redeeming, 
ever claiming us as the God's children. Come, let us worship the God who washes us in grace. Let us pray. Most wonderful God, foolish and flawed though we are, we are too delighted in your beloved Son, as in his name we gather in the house of many praises. May the heavens be opened for us, that we may catch a glimpse of that light and love that transforms our common days with a beauty not of our making. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello United Church of Sandwich. It's good to be with you virtually this morning. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Derek Rogers and I'm a United Methodist pastor in Aurora at Flowing Forth United Methodist Church. And uh, you are part of my home church. My mom is Sarah Stevens. And uh, I just want to say uh, before I begin, thank you to uh, raising me up in the faith and uh, contributing to who I am as a person and uh, as a pastor. So thank you. Uh, I also am grateful to your pastor, Tom, for inviting me to uh, preach for you today. And uh, I want <clears throat> to share with you this morning a reading from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, this story is, uh, is of the baptism of Jesus, and it's a story that we hear often uh, in the lectionary in these first few weeks of the new year. And so uh, let me read this for you. Mark chapter 1, starting at verse 4. So John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth and Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven and said, You are my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. He lavishes graces, our burdens grow greater. He sends us more strength as our labors increase. To added afflictions, he offers more mercy. To multiply trials, he multiplies peace. When we have exhausted our store of endurance, when our strength is failed and the day is half done, when we His love has 
begins this morning with a gathering of people. A gathering not that much unlike uh, the gathering of people that we have uh, at any church. There were people from all walks of life, young people, old people, rich people, poor people, conservative, liberal. There were people gathered there just like you and me. There was this huge line of them stretching from the shore of the Jordan River deep into the trees and shrubbery of the nearby wilderness. 
Now these people were gathered together because they were searching for something. Most notably, what they were searching for, I think, was a fresh start. You see, uh, these people were a bunch of faulty, sorry, guilty human beings. They were sinners, which, if you need a little reminding, is also just like you and me were sinners too. These people were guilty of all kinds of things, from drunk driving to cutting bad checks, from petty larceny to assault, but most of them were probably there for, for crimes that wouldn't show up on a police rap sheet. They, they were there for crimes of the heart, known only to themselves or maybe to their closest friends and family members. And they were there because they had heard John's call. They desperately wanted to change their hearts and lives. They, they wanted more than anything for God to, to forgive them, for, for John to, to clean them up and, and turn their lives around. You see, these people who were gathering, they had no illusion of their own innocence. They had come to the water to be cleaned. They had come to the water to be made new. Then, uh, according to our story, this guy named Jesus showed up. Maybe you've heard of him before. But in this version of the story, no one knows anything about Jesus yet. You see, in Mark's gospel, there is no account of his birth. There's nothing about angels appearing to Mary and Joseph or magi traveling from far off countries to visit a newborn king. As far as Mark is concerned, Jesus' life begins then and there by the shore of this river next to all these people just like you and me. There was no fanfare associated with his arrival, no riotous crowds, no clamoring for his attention. He simply got in line just like the rest, and waited his turn. You see, it's, it's only after Jesus is dunked in the river by John that we have any idea at all who he is. Maybe you caught it in, in the story that I said. It says that while he was coming up out of the waters, the heavens were torn apart, and a voice came out of the heavens that said, You're my son whom I dearly love, the pride of my life. This moment is our first indication of some really important things in Mark's gospel. First, we get our, our initial hint at who exactly this Jesus guy is. Mark will go on to tell a lot more stories in the course of his book about who Jesus is, just to fill in the gaps a little bit, but this is our first hint at his true identity. He's God's beloved son. But then the second thing we learn through this scene, which is perhaps more important, is that nothing will ever be the same again. Nothing will ever be the same again. The heavens here in Mark's gospel have literally been torn open. Now, this isn't the nice and neat toned down version of Matthew's gospel or Luke's gospel, where it says the heavens are simply opened up like, like a window being opened to let in some fresh air or something. No, in, in Mark's story, the heavens are literally torn open, ripped apart. You see, what's opened can be closed, but what's ripped apart can never be repaired. God's hands tear a gap in the sky, forever connecting heaven and earth, and it all has to do with this man named Jesus, who is called God's beloved son. Now, before we go any further, I, I want to be clear to point something out to you. In the middle of the verses that I read, it says, In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee to the river Jordan. Now, when people read this story, they might latch on to those words, in those days. And most people, I've found, do not hesitate to, to say that Jesus came in those days. They have no problem admitting that, but deep inside they know that those days are not these days. 
those days are not our days. It's easy to get that impression, to think that the Bible only talks about days long ago and far away, and it doesn't have much bearing on or meaning for our lives here and now. And that's why I want to be clear. In those days, the heavens may have been torn apart, but in these days, heaven and earth are still connected by this ripped open hole. In those days, what we had was merely the beginning of the operation planned and unleashed by God, an invasion operation, so to speak, that was not confined to merely then and there, but that still is in effect here and now. In those days, God's kingdom and reign were coming, ready or not, but still today, God's kingdom and reign are present and working among us. When, when the heavens were ripped open in those days, there was an irreversible shift in the world. Things will never be the same again. Now, theologian Karl Barth, Barth said this is an astonishing claim that's being made. In this scene where the heavens are torn open and Jesus is claimed as God's beloved son, that, that in this scene we are let in on God's divine plan that, quote, God no longer wants to remain hiv hidden in the heights of heaven, but descends to the depths of earthly life in order to be seen and heard and even stand in line with people just like you and me. Heaven and earth are forever connected, forever linked together. The fabric between the two has this gaping hole in it that has been ripped apart. Things have never been the same since. So what does this mean for you and for me here today? Well, on one level, it means the same thing for us as it meant to all those people uh, in our story who were gathered together searching for a fresh start. You see, God has unleashed an operation by which all people will come to be saved. God has invaded earth with God's very own presence so that we don't have to wonder what God is like or even if God cares. God is no longer hidden in the clouds or in some far off heaven. God has come to earth and God is standing in a line by a river with a whole bunch of people just like you and me. In Jesus' baptism, the world as we know it is forever changed. In our baptism, there's a similar shift. Our lives as we know them are forever changed in our baptism. You see, baptism isn't just a, a few handfuls of water and a bunch of fancy words. It's a, it's a tearing in the fabric of our lives. We'll never be the same again. It's irreversible. God is forever linked with you, and you are forever linked with with heaven. In baptism, God is no longer hidden in the heights of heaven, but has come to dwell on earth and even remarkably, unbelievably inside of you. In baptism, you're given a, a fresh start. In baptism, you're offered abundant grace and showered in love. And all of these things have, have a tendency of altering our lives significantly. In Jesus' baptism, we say the world will never be the same again. But in our baptism, we say I will never be the same again. My life is forever changed. But that's not all. Because each and every day that you and I live out our baptism... I believe that that hole that was torn between heaven and earth when Jesus was baptized is being made bigger and bigger. As we live out the values of God's kingdom and are obedient to God's will here on earth, the connection between heaven and earth gets stronger. As the sky is ripped open more and more, heaven starts coming here on earth more and more fully. So in this way, our baptism not only changes our life, but it should change other people's lives too because of the new way that we live. 
and, and, and people will see heaven coming more and more fully, the, the, the fabric between heaven and earth being ripped open for more. And that's why I want to invite you this morning to remember and recommit to your baptism today. Now, I want to be clear about something because it seems like every time I've ever done a baptism remembrance service, uh, I've had people come up to me or, or write to me after the service and say, well, I can't remember my baptism because I was a baby when it happened. Or, oh, I remember my baptism. It happened when I was six years old at such and such a church. But today when I say we're going to remember our baptism, that's not what I'm getting at. You're being asked today to remember that in your baptism, God claims you as a beloved child. You are extended grace and given a fresh start. And, and this wasn't a once in a lifetime sort of thing. When you remember your baptism, you remember that God is still claiming you today as his beloved child, no matter what you've done. God is still extending grace upon grace to you and is still offering you a fresh start each new day. But also what you're remembering in your baptism is that God calls you to live it out each day. This isn't water and, and fancy words. This is a life-altering commitment to live in the light of God's grace and according to God's will. To live knowing that heaven and earth are forever linked, connected together, and to try and make that connection between heaven and earth even stronger by living it out through our lives, living it out through our love, living it out through our service. Friends, baptism is not something that happens once in our lives and then it's over. Baptism is an identity. And every morning we wake up, we're called to remember that we're offered grace and we're called to live as God's children. We're called to make this connection between heaven and earth even more apparent and through our lives. Because of Jesus' baptism, the world has never been the same since. And because of our baptism, the things of our life will hopefully never be the same again. And so what I want to invite you to, to do today is to go to your kitchen uh, or your bathroom and get some water. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just get some water in a bowl or in a cup. It, it doesn't even have to be as big of a bowl as I have right here. So just go ahead and pause the video right now and get yourself some water. I'll be here when you get back. Now what I want you to do is to dip your fingers in the water and make a sign of a cross on your forehead and repeat this prayer after me. Lord, I remember my baptism. Wash me by your grace. Fill me with your spirit. Renew my soul. I pray that I might live as your child today and honor you in all that I do. Amen. Friends, baptism isn't a one and done thing. It's an identity that we live out each and every day. Something that I do often when I take a shower in the morning is I pray that prayer, asking praying that I would remember my baptism this day and seek to live as a beloved child of God this day. Seek to, to live that identity out by honoring God in all that I do and say. And so friends, remember your baptism today. Recommit to living it out. But don't just do it today. Maybe make it your 2021 resolution to every day. First thing when you wake up or right when you get out of shower, the shower in the morning or when you take a, a, a drink of water at lunchtime, whenever it is, to remember your baptism 
and recommit to live into that identity. Because friends, when the heavens were torn open in Jesus' baptism, the world was never the same again. When we were baptized, our world, our life was never the same again. And we're called to live it out so that that gaping hole between heaven and earth gets even bigger by us living it out. Let's pray. Gracious God, as we remember our baptism today, we pray that you would help us to live as your children, that our lives would be changed because of you, and that we would seek to honor you in all that we say and do, so that heaven can come even more fully here on earth. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen.